Hello, Namaste. I welcome you all again in MVM Science and Home Science Digital Learning. Today, we are going to discuss regarding paper number 503, Molecular Biology and Bioengineering. In this first unit, we are going to discuss regarding the topic of DNA as the universal genetic material. Now, we all are aware about DNA, right? So this is the structure of DNA. This is very helpful for you to understand. You can draw it in your notebooks so that it will be easier for you to understand. Now, what is DNA? DNA is deoxyribose nucleic acid. So naturally, it is one kind of nucleic acid. So there are two types of nucleic acid, DNA and RNA. The building blocks of DNA are nucleotides, each composed of a five carbon sugar, called deoxyribose sugar. So here you can see that deoxyribose sugar is present in the structure of DNA, whereas ribose sugar is present in the structure of RNA, right? Here there is a phosphate group, a nitrogenous base, and there are four different types of nitrogenous bases, adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. Next, Nucleotides are connected to each other to form a long chain. Various bonds are present in the structure of DNA. One of them is phosphodiester bond, bond between the adjacent nucleotides. Now there are two different words, nucleosides and nucleotides. Nucleoside plus phosphate forms nucleotide, right? Formed this between the phosphate group of one nucleotide and the three prime OH hydroxyl group is the next nucleotide. The chain of nucleotides is five prime to three prime and orientation. Now, whatever we have discussed, this is the actual representation of this diagram. So it will be easier for you to understand. Next, determining the three dimensional structure of DNA. Now we all are aware that DNA is the 3D structure. So, Erwin Chargoff gave one rule that is known as Chargoff's rule where it states that amount of adenine present inside a molecule is equal to the amount of thymine and amount of cytosine is equal to the amount of guanine. So, A is always binding with T. So, A and T ratio will be similar and cytosine and guanine ratio will be similar. This is known as Chargoff's rule. Rosalind Franklin and Maurice Wilkins gave X-ray diffraction study to give the 3D structure of the DNA that they showed that DNA is actually a helical structure. They discovered that the molecule has a diameter of 2 nanometer and makes a complete turn, one full turn of a helix that is every helix is 3.4 nanometer. Watson and Crick, we all are aware about these two scientists. They are the ones who gave the structure of DNA, which is the double helical structure, which runs in the anti-parallel direction. They deduced the structure of DNA using the evidence from Chargers, Franklin and others. They proposed the double helix structure of the DNA. The double helix consists of, as we all are aware, this is just a revision recap, two sugar phosphate backbones, nitrogenous base, interior to the molecules based from the hydrogen bonds which are complementary on the other sugar phosphate backbone. This you have already studied in your previous standards. The structure of DNA, the nucleotide structure consists of nitrogenous base attached to the carbon phosphate group and free prime hydroxyl group at three prime end. The two strands are in anti-parallel direction. One is running in one direction, another is running in opposite direction. So they are never merging, they are anti-parallel. In mathematics, you all have studied that parallel lines do not cross each other. One is oriented in five prime to three prime end and other one is oriented into three prime to five prime end. The two strands wrap around. They are wrapping around each other. Whenever we are gifting someone something, we are always wrapping a ribbon. So they are never crossing each other. We are just wrapping it around each other to create a helical structure. This is a clear cut diagram where you can see a major groove, minor groove. You can see 3.4 nanometer one ton and one small 
part is 0.3 nanometer, right? A is binding always with T, that is adenine is binding with thymine and guanine with cytosine, right? Major group, minor group, this is the structure of the DNA, sugar moieties, etc. This is the chemicals representation of the structure of the DNA. Your bonds are shown. A is binding with T with double bond and C and G are with the triple bond. So C and G bonds are harder compared to A and T. A and T is also having hydrogen bond whereas phosphodiester bond are present between the DNA moieties, right? You can see anti parallel. Here it is 5 prime to 3 prime. Here it is 5 prime to 3 prime. So here it is 5, here it is 3. So this is anti parallel. Now let us come to the topic that is proof that DNA is the genetic material. Now we have studied about what is DNA, how its structure is there. Now we are going to discuss various experiments which prove that DNA is the genetic material and why not RNA. So here we are going to study various experiment. One is the experiment of transformation given by Frederick Griffith in 1928. See, now what did Griffith do? He took different strain of streptococcus pneumonia, that is a pathogenic bacteria, which causes the pneumonia in normal living organisms or normal mammals. So he took two different strains of the streptococcus pneumonia. One is termed as S, that is smooth strain, that is virulent and one is rough, that is a virulent or you can say non-virulent. What does the word virulent means? Virulent means having power to cause the disease, right? Now these two strains were taken by him. What he did next? He infected mice with this two strain, hoping to understand the difference between the strains. Now, one organism is having two strains. One is smooth, another is rough. Why it is smooth? Because it is having one polysaccharide layer on outside the cell and rough does not consist of any layer. What he did, he infected the mice with both of the strains and he was curious, eager to know that what will be the outcome. So what he did, he did live found that live smooth strain cells killed the mice. The mice which was infected with this live smooth strain, the one which was having a slimy layer, it killed the mice while the R that is rough strain did not kill the mice. Now what he did in the next part, he took heat killed smooth strain and heat killed smooth plus rough strain, right? Heat kills smooth strain cells did not kill the mice. Now why? Because the outer layer was killed so it did not infect the mice. The mice was alive. What he did next? He did heat kills smooth strain plus live R strain. Now understand the difference. Heat kills smooth strain. The smooth strain was heat killed and rough strain was live and it killed the mice. Now what was the outcome? See, here you can see it in clearly in the diagram that live virulent strain, live strain, virulent strain of this, it was having polysaccharide caught. So mice died. When rough was there, mice is living. Now what is the next? Yes, you all are already able to understand that the mice lives because of this mixture of heat kill heat kill virulent and live non virulent means heat kill smooth and rough strain did not allow mice to live why because there was something present inside this which was causing the infection so their lungs contain the pathogenic strain of streptococcus pneumonia I hope you all are able to understand. You again go through this. You will be able to get what I want to say. That there was something which was present inside the smooth cells which was not able to infect the mice. But when it was mixed with the rough strain, 
there was something which happened inside the body of the mouse where the result was the death of the mice now what was his conclusion information specifying virulence passed that now he was sure that there was something virulence factor was passed from the dead strain into the live strain though it was dead but it has something which was virulent which passed on to the rough cells and it transformed and the mouse was killed so the griffith called the transfer of this information as the transformation transformation means what moving of something from one place to another what here is moving from heat killed smooth cells the virulence is being transferred from the smooth cell to rough cell which actually killed the mice so here it is proving that this virulence is in there now what this virulence was was it related to dna that we will be studying in some another experiments next was the scientist every macleod and mccarty these three scientists together now repeated the griffith experiment using what they used purified cell extracts and discovered that removal of all proteins from the transforming material did not destroy its ability to transform rough strain cells what does this means that when you are removing out the protein from the transforming material virulence power you are removing out the protein did not destroy its ability to transform into the rough cells now dna digesting enzymes destroyed all the transforming ability Pro either it could be protein the virulence either it could be one part of protein or dna so protein did not kill what next they did the dna digesting enzymes the things which digest the dna they destroyed all the transforming ability the transforming material is dna this you can see from the figure given over here they took pure culture of the smooth cells they did the experiment the culture were transferred it contained the colonies next what they did the transforming activity is not destroyed by other process or rnas either rnas or either dna so what they do they cultured it they found that on agar medium r colonies had and few s colonies but here only rough cells were present the conclusion that transforming activity most is likely dna what was conclusion over here why it is because it is with the rnas right so rna digesting protein digesting the conclusion was rna the transforming activity is not protein or rna why because you can clearly see inside the figure that what actually they did so first was griffith's experiment which showed that there is something which is transforming but what it was transforming that was confirmed by every macleod and mccarty that it is not, not the protein but it is the dna which is doing the actual transformation next was the scientist hershey's and chase right they investigated on bacteriophages now what are bacteriophages the virus which is infecting the bacteria the bacteriophage was composed only of dna and protein naturally the phage is having only a proteinaceous coat and inside it the dna or the genetic material is present now what they wanted to do they wanted to determine which of these molecules is the genetic material that is injected into the bacteria so two possibilities will be there either the above protein coat or the dna so what they did they labeled with the radioactive phosphorus now we all are aware protein does not contain phosphorus they contain sulfur but dna contains phosphorus we already studied previously in the structure of the dna so what they did they did a smart move they labeled with the phosphorus and labeled with the radioactive sulfur so it will be very much easier for us to understand that if 
phosphorus is being shown that means dna will be there if sulfur is detected then it will be protein radioactive molecules were pressed what tracking of these molecules got done only the bacteriophage dna is indicated by the phosphorus entered the bacteria and was used to produce more bacteriophage so the thing which is replicating was having phosphorus inside it not the sulfur the conclusion again is the same that dna is the genetic material here it is very clear you can see this experiment is also known as the blender's experiment because here we are using blender see phages are grown firstly they are grown with the radioactively labeled sulfur and another with the radioactively labeled phosphorus then they are allowed to infect the bacteria after infection they are blend now what blending will do they will mix all the things together so it will separate phage coat from the bacteria then we are using centrifugation centrifugation will form the bacterial pellet in the supernatant we found sulfur and in next pellet we found the phosphorus so naturally the bacteria the living organisms will be settled down because of the density so we concluded that bacteria pre is present inside the pellet and yet contains the radioactively labeled phosphorus and not the sulfur why because sulfur is already present in the supernatant now this is very important for you all to understand in test tube whatever the material which is settled down in the form of a mass heavy mass form that is termed as bacterial pellet or cell pellet in the things which are present inside the above liquid that is termed as supernatant right so i hope you all are clear with this experiment individually any of the three experiments griffith's experiment of transformation next is a uh, three macleod and mccarthy experiment and hershey's and ex uh, chase experiment can be individually asked as three marker or five marker this whole question that proved that dna is the universal genetic material can also be asked as a full mark question also one or two marker few mcqs or fill in the blanks or a few questions can be asked so start preparing your notes accordingly next we are going to discuss in short about dna replication now after all this experiments that dna is a genetic material we are going to discuss about how dna is replicating so in this few next few slides we are going to take an overview within the upcoming lectures we will be discussing about the whole process of actual dna replication so your meselson and stars stars experiment is there which is helping in the process of dna replication they investigated the process of replication they considered three different models which already in previous video lecture we have discussed semi conservative conservative and dispersive model also again this is the recap for you all what is conservative what is semi conservative and what is dispersive model bacterial cells were grown in heavy isotope n15 that is nitrogen right it is heavy isotope generally it is n14 but here we are using n15 all the dna incorporated cells were switched to media containing lighter n14 dna was extracted from the cell at various time interval the dna from different point was analyzed and ratio of n15 to n14 it contained around one round of replication was having a hybrid of n14 and 15 which is similar to this that is semi conservative one round half will be n15 and half will be n14 so this hybrid we are talking about it is never such in genetics that one topic is just once no every time you have to correlate the certain things many a times written lines will not be able to understand but if you see the figure if you are having clarity of the concepts you will be able to correlate that what teacher is talking about after round 2 of replication their dna contain two different types of molecules how what two different types of molecules this is a second round so half will be n14 n15 and half will be only n14 that is original 
hope you all are clear this you can see in the figure that first round you are studying then zero round parental then first round and second round that is from parent to daughter cells it forming two one to two two to four so this is completely new this is having hybrid this you can show it in a graphical manner right so these were the experiment of Messelson and Stahls do not mix each and all experiments together. Messelson and Stahl concluded that the mechanism of DNA replication is semi-conservative and not conservative and dispersive. Each strand of DNA X is a template strand for the synthesis of a new strand. Now I hope after these two lectures you all are very clear about template strand, complementary strand and semi-conservative nature of the DNA. Now these also we have studied DNA replication includes three different steps initiation, elongation and termination. Replication will begin at the site that is of origin C, ORI C. Prokaryotic DNA replication is circular molecule of DNA replication began at the site of origin or EC. Here you can see it in the figure origin and termination. Origin you are doing then it is in circular manner then it will be replicating one more circle and then both will be separated. Next is prokaryotic DNA replication. Double helix is unwound by the enzyme helicase. As we have studied, it is we have studied in the uh, previous video that properties of DNA replication, various enzyme, multi enzymatic processes there. So various enzymes are used like helicase, DNA polymerase one, two, and three. But here it is important that DNA polymerase three plays an important role in DNA synthesis. Here you can see what DNA polymerase 3 is doing. In prokaryotic, it is semi-discontinuous. Semi means half discontinuous. One is continuous, another one is semi-discontinuous where Okazaki fragments, if you are aware about this word, they are produced and then replication is doing because it is anti-parallel. It is not parallel, it is anti-parallel. So it is semi-discontinuous and two strands will be formed where one will be leading a strand and another would be lagging. So a replication fork, a fork-like structure will be generated. And on the discontinuous fragments, Okazaki fragments or things will be placed. Here you can see. This is open helical structure, RNA primer will bind to the DNA, this is lagging strand, this is leading strand, this is continuous, this is discontinuous, your gaps are there, right? So, this is semi-discontinuous model of DNA replication. The enzyme for DNA replication are contained within the replisome, right? Replisome consists of primosome, DNA polymerase 3, Fork moves in one direction in both the strands simultaneously. See, here you can see a clear figure. You take five minutes to study this particular slide. So it will be, you will be very much clear about how DNA replication processes. Within upcoming videos, we are going to study the whole process of replication in detail. But your overview is given so you become somewhat clear about this. Various enzymes are present, located and they are helping in the process of DNA replication. Eukaryotic DNA replication, the larger size and complex packaging of eukaryotic chromosome. As we all are aware that prokaryotes are simpler form compared to the eukaryotes, right? The enzyme of eukaryotic are more complex compared to prokaryotes. Primer will be there, replication, fork will be generated in this. This is eukaryotic. Telomers or telomers will be formed, repeated DNA sequence on the end of eukaryotic chromosomes 
contains an RNA region that is used as a template so DNA primer can be produced. If you are aware about the central dogma of the life from DNA, mRNA is produced that processes termless transcription and from mRNA, a polypeptide chain is produced that is known as translation. So RNA, from DNA, RNA has to be made uh, so as to make the complete process of poly formation of polypeptide chain. Hope you all, all are able to understand this genetics is not very easy. You can step by step start learning. It will be easier for you. Right? So this with this, today we conclude our session. Hope you all are aware about this various experiments of the proof of DNA as the genetic material. Again, I am reminding you to start studying, start preparing various notes. Do not roam outside and hope you all are having no doubts. Still, if you are having any doubts, we can solve it when we are meeting in person. Stay home, stay safe and thank you very much all.